Let's look at the next topic, which is overview of the programming languages and Python. So programming languages can be categorized into two main categories. The first category on the left here is called the compiled language. And then here on the right hand side, we have another type is called the interpreted programming languages. So these are the two very popular ones. Um, so for compiled language, um, first of all, we have a source code. So from the source code, we need to go through a compiler, uh, example, C compiler or Fortran uh, compilers. And then after we perform the compilation, then only we have the executable file as a result. And then we will double click and we will run the executable file, even typing commands or maybe using the double click. So an example of an executable file will be our windows.exe file. This is a compilation. And then once we run the executable files, you will then run on top of operating system and then uh, based on the different CPU types, uh, the program will execute the machine language. So on the other hand, we have the interpreted language. Uh, so from the source code, we are actually running through uh, the interpreter and then to process the source code line by line and then to give us the result that we want to see. So this is the computing technology stack and the program execution process. So here you can see we have a hardware layer and also at the top we have the software layer. So at the hardware layer, you can see that this is the instruction set architecture. Uh, example, we have uh, x86, uh, very uh, the popular choice of uh, CPU architecture. And also we have ARM processor, and we also have some other RISC processor, some like, example like HP PA RIS from uh, from Oracle, we have a sign processor, which is called the uh, Spark processor, etc. Et so these are the different type of uh, ISA. So at the software stack, we have the application, then uh, application have a different algorithm. They will actually run uh, on the uh, high level uh, language. So let's look at on this uh, program execution process, high level programming language. So you can see this is example, we have a source code. And uh, C language have their own C language source code. Uh, Fortran have their own Fortran source code. So once we type the source code and then we go through a compiler, a compiler will actually uh, generate into the executable file. So executable file will then be interpreted by the assembly language. So assembly language is something like this. And then assembly language will then convert uh, from your executable into the machine code. So example machine code here is like 0110. And then these are actually the instruction set that will be sent into the uh, the CPU and to be processed. So x86 have their own sets of CPU instruction set. An example like ARM processor have their own different sets. And also based on the machine code, they will also convert it into the data. So for example, if you convert, uh, if you type something uh, to save as a Microsoft Word document, they will also convert this into 0110 and then store it under the hard drive. So let's look at one of the example here for high level programming languages, the compiled language. So again, compiled language means a program has to be compiled before we can execute. So the example, so uh, this is from source code to program. So let's look at the process, how it is being done. For compiled language, these are the popular examples. We have C language, C++, and also uh, Go language. Now Go language is actually a uh, currently very popular programming language and is actually developed by Google. So from source code to program, you can see that source code needs to be translated into the machine instruction by the compiler and also the assembler. So this is the process from the source code, we go through a compiler, we come up with the assembly language program. And then from the assembly language program, it will go into the uh, machine language module. And then the linker will then link the library function to generate machine language program. So a lot of program nowadays, they don't only depend on this own source code. Somehow they also link to other libraries and uh, to, to speed up the programming process. So then it comes up with the uh, combined together with a machine language and to be processed into the, uh, into the memory uh, using the loader to do the uh, middleman. So this is an example of interpreted language. So here we have two examples, Java and Python. These two are very popular 
interpreted languages. But remember, they are not limited to these two uh, languages. So if you look at the uh, process from source code to program, so first the source code of the interpreted language is generated by the compiler and interpreted, and then interpreted as executed by the virtual machine. So example here, we have the Java virtual machines, and we, have a, we also have the Python virtual machines. Now, the reason why we have the virtual machines here, it says that the virtual machines shield the difference between CPU instruction set. So it also means that Java languages can also suitable to be running on top of, uh, uh, let's say, x86 uh, CPU architecture and also suitable to run on top of the uh, ARM processor because the virtual machine language, virtual machine itself actually will do the translation into the CPU architecture. So as a programmer point of view, you don't need to worry too much about the CPU architecture. What you need to worry is the, uh, the coding and the syntax, okay? So these are the, the example. And so example from Python on this side here, we can actually compile uh, from your source code, compile it and become a PYC file extension. And then again, for Python itself, they also can use some other libraries, uh, the modules to enhance the functionality and also to reduce uh, the uh, programming effort by the developers.